theme preview very shortly, but Eduardo, for Eduardo, example, for example, is running the Half Flame mask over Pon, whereas uh, Federico is running the Wellspring mask. Uh, Eduardo is running the uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu form, whereas Federico is running the Single Strike. And taking more of a deep dive into Eduardo's team itself is also the Fluttermain, Rillaboom, uh, Tornadus, and Chien Power, and those achievements on the left, as well as being World Champion 2022, speak for themselves. Yes, of course. And as you just mentioned, yeah, of course, uh, already qualified for Worlds since he did win the Barcelona special event. And also, he is also the manager for Team Portugal and did compete last year as well. And he went two and one, so only losing one of his matches last year. Uh, and yeah, looking at uh, his team here, as you just said, he is running that water type Urshifu and uh, Federico is running the dark type Urshifu. But it is actually Federico's Tornadus, which is running the Rain Dance, uh, whereas Edo here is running the Tornadus with just Bleakwood Storm, Tailwind Taunt, and also Scary Face. So double speed, uh, double speed control support in case, you know, for those Tailwind Mirror matches, the Scary Face can be very useful. And Chi and Pao, you know, your typical Ice Crash, uh, Sucker Punch, Sacred Sword set. We do some, I have seen a few Chi and Pao run uh, Ice Spinner again, since we do have a lot of, you know, Rillaboom setting grassy terrains, in DD setting psychic terrain, so that does make sense as well. But then, of course, Icicle Crash, a little bit more damage and also doesn't trigger things like Rocky Helmets if you're attacking something like an Amoonus. That is true, but of course, Icicle Crash can miss, whereas Ice Spinner doesn't normally, which is always uh, a benefit to have energy and power. But of course, yes, any recall damage from a Rocky Helmet would break a Focus Sash, which is its item of choice. And taking a look at Federico Camparese's achievements, first of all, as you said, Shona, a world's top four from 2023, but also Liverpool Regional Top 16 2023, two very recent achievements, uh, a two times international finalist and three times regional champion. So, really. Really is a clash of the titans here and the rest of his team composed of golden go rid of uh, tornadoes and landers as well as that single strike urshifu we highlighted before golden go in a really interesting position at the moment in the meta of course james beck was able to pilot it to great success winning peoria regional championships last weekend so golden go perhaps having a bit of a resurgence it's been a pokemon that's always been on the scene ever since regulation a here and there um and with some really ample support options as well yeah and the goldengo i think it is one of uh, the scariest pokemon to face in this meta at the moment i also like to point out here that you know yeah he is running double grasp which is also risen in popularity in regulation e you know since ogre pond can be played with both that wellspring mask and also the heart flame mask you know, uh, makes it very flexible in any kind of team. But the Rilla Boom, of course, also still a very strong grass Pokemon to have around. And as I just mentioned, this Tornadus is running Tailwind, Rain Dance, Bleak and Storm, and Taunt. That Rain Dance, you know, even though uh, Federico is not running Water type Urshifu, which you would expect to see with that combination, uh, it might help this Goldengo, for instance, survive fire moves better if it is not that Terra Dragon yet. But also, you know, there is a little bit of Hail teams running around, you know, especially that nine tails wanting to set up the aurora veil so since you do have uh, the practicer ability a rain dance could stop something like that from going up yeah exactly uh really useful defensive tech having rain dance on your tornadoes and uh, yes those pesky a load of nine tails as well <laughs> denying it the aurora veil is always a good option a load of nine tails won't be coming out in this matchup let's see what does as we get into game one between these two absolute masters of the game Double Genie uh, on the one side for Federico with Tornadus and Landorus, and it's going to be Tornadus and Fluttermane for Eduardo. Yeah, Double Genies. Usually when I hear that term, I would think of uh, Landorus and Thunderous, but, you know, we haven't really seen a lot of Thunderous in Scarlet and Violet yet. You know, players opting for that Tornadus instead. So Landorus here is going to, you know, fire up Intimidate. Not going to matter to either of Eduardo's uh, Pokemon here. And the Fluttermane and Tornado is, of course, on Eduardo's field. So both players could opt to set up for a Tailwind here. But since Federico's Landorus is Choice Scarf, you know, it is going to be able to outspeed this Fluttermane if, uh, if both players decide to go for that. And, of course, Eduardo is running Choice Specs Fluttermane. So not the boost rate we've seen so much of so far. 
At this point in the game, it's going to be a Tailwind coming out from Eduardo's own Tornadus, allowing a very fast Shadow Ball to come out into Landorus, and with oh! a critical hit, that is a one-hit knockout. That is an absolutely devastating blow on this very first turn of this matchup between Italy and Portugal. Fleetwind Storm connecting on both Pokemon. Is it going to get a speed drop? Yes, it will, onto Eduardo's Tornadus, but the Fluttermane keeps itself safe from that speed drop. So Federico has now lost the uh, the ability to switch in Landorus for an Intimidate as Rillaboom joins the field, setting up that grassy terrain. And uh, it's always interesting having a face off between two Tornadoes. Is one of you gonna taunt? Is one of you gonna go straight for the Tailwind? Uh, as it was, it was Tailwind coming out from Eduardo's and Leap Windstorm coming out from Federico's. Yeah, that critical hit on the Shadow Ball definitely mattered as it would not have been able to lock out the, uh, knock out the Landorus either way. Uh, uh, Okay, but Rillaboom here is going to be able to threaten this Fluttermane now with a Grassy Bite, but is going to go for a Fake Out instead, so Fluttermane is going to be able to fire off another Specs Shadow Ball into this Tornadus, but no critical, no critical hit this time, so it will be able to sh survive, prop that Citrus Berry, heal up a little bit more, and of course, Eduardo's Tornadus will not be able to move this turn. Bleakwood Storm coming out here is going to do a little bit of damage to both of these Pokémon. Still not enough to knock either of them out, and now Edu's Tornadus is going to be recovering a little bit of health as well with the Citrus Berry here. So, um, now, you know, both players have still not, um, or Eduardo did go for that Tailwind, of course, in the first round at, uh, I believe, uh, Federico does not have Tailwind on his side of the field yet, but he might not need that since, you know, since the Grassy Terrain is up here, the Rillaboom could just go for a Grassy Life with his Fluttermane. Exactly. Finally, we see the taunt coming out from Eduardo into Federico's own Tornadus, which has just gone for double bleak when Storm's Grassy Glide is able to pick up the knockout onto Eduardo's Fluttermane. Now that goes down, so a big damage dealer down and out for the count. The taunt <laughs> ended up not being worth it because it was bleak when Storm coming out anyway from Federico's Tornadus, and uh, Eduardo's own is able to survive on just 5 HP. And this is the thing about bleak when Storm, as a spread type move, it just slowly whittles away, or in some cases, depending on the build of your Tornadus uh, whittles away really rather quickly onto the damage on your side of the field. But I think even though Eduardo has lost his Fluttermane here, he can be pleased with the work that it put in. Oh yeah, definitely. Taking out the Landorus was a huge uh, play for him. And I really like Fate he could just continuously going for Bleak Wind Storms, you know, realizing that since Edo does have the speed advantage at the moment, will probably go for a taunt, so Federico cannot set up a Tailwind on his own. This goes for the knockout there onto the Fluttermane, but I am surprised that that Tornadus managed to hang on with just 5 HP, since the Bleak Wind Storm there was a single target as opposed to a double target. So Chi and Pao coming in here is going to be threatening that Rillaboom with an Ice-type move, but of course uh, Rillaboom does still have the opportunity to go for priority grass glides. Yeah, it does. Uh, of course, Chi and Pao threatening super effective damage onto both Pokémon on Federico's side of the field. We yet see a terrestrialization so far in this game, both players being fairly conservative about that. Grassy Glide easily enough, even though it's a not more effective hit to pick up the knockout into Eduardo's incredibly low health Tornadus. Uh, Icicle Crash is going to connect onto the Tornadus on Federico's side, so that goes down as well. So normal Tailwind for either of the players in this game. What is the Rillaboom locked into? Uh, we saw it earlier on in the game as the Tailwind peters out and Rillaboom rejoins the field for Eduardo. So, grassy terrain is not going to be reset. It's already on the field. Ogapon coming out for Federico. And it is that Wellspring form. So, it's a game that's fairly fast-paced so far. And uh, that Ogapon can go for the terrestrialization in order to mitigate any uh, ice-type damage that could come out. Yeah, I was just going to say a very fast-paced game, both players down to their last two Pokémon, and we're yet to see a terrestrialization on either side of the field. Of course, uh, you know, Federico is playing Terra Fire, as uh, Edo is actually playing Terra Water, so uh, it might be in a little bit of a, an advantage here with that Terra type, since, you know, Lilaboon really doesn't want to go for a Water Terra here against an <laughs> opposing Lilaboon as we do see a terrestrialization come out here for what I believe is the Lichus side of the field is going to go for that Terra Fire so it can resist both that Ice type move from Chi and Pao and of course continue to resist the Grassy Lights from uh, Eden's group as well. But he is just going to go for a Fake Out into that slot and an Icicle Crash into the Ogre Pond is going to do 
about 60%. Horn Leech coming out though is going to do a lot of damage to that Chia Pao as well and heal itself right back up. I'm not sure if another Icicle Crash would be able to KO this over point, uh, over point by itself at this point, especially after the grassy terrain recovery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Federico believing that as long as I don't get the flinch, I'll be able to recover with a Horn Leech. And it's a good thing it didn't flinch because uh, that could have been crucial for Eduardo in this game. But Federico still has, um, sorry, of course, Federico has already terrestrialized his Rillaby into the fire type as Chi and Pao is going to go for a Protect. And this Ogapon is stuck with its dual grass and water typing going for a follow me. So keeping the Rillaboom safe onto uh, his side of the field as Grassy Glide uh, was heading into the protected Chien Pao for Edward. Yeah, uh, really nice follow me there for Federico because the only thing threatening um, his Rillaboom right now is the high horsepower from Edo's Rillaboom. So follow me is going to be able to redirect that no problem. And of course, it's a, you know, now that the grassy terrain actually has left the field, this Chien Pao will be able to fire off an Icicle Crash before a Grassy Glide comes out. Because last turn, it could have gone down in that turn since you know, it still had that priority. But now it's a little bit more tricky. <laughs> hmm, yeah, exactly. Um, it's two Pokemon apiece for both of these trainers. It could well come down to a face-off between these Rillabooms, uh, which would be really interesting to see. Uh, Eduardo still has not used the Terra on his side. It'd be interesting to see if that comes out and whether it would be useful for Eduardo in this position. Ogapon is going to be uh, following me again, and this is the danger oh. of using Sucker Punch in that position because it's rendered absolutely useless. Chi and Pao goes down for Eduardo to a super effective U-turn, and he's left with just his Rillaboom. So if there's going to be a Terra, it will be that. And unfortunately, uh, Ogapon, for, unfortunately for Eduardo, Ogapon dodges the high horsepower, which of course would be a resisted hit into the Ogapon anyway. And a very quick lock in of moves with Ivy Cudgel coming out from Ogapon. Yeah, interesting to see Iru go for a Sucker Punch there as uh, opposed to something like an Icicle Crash. I'm guessing it's uh, maybe because. Uh... Oh, Ogrepon hangs up with just a little <laughs> bit of HP, but uh, at this point, uh, Eduardo is not going to be able to come back from this, even with the high horsepower. And so let's now get into game two and see how that develops here. Uh, which Pokemon will be led for these trainers? It's going to be Rillaboom and Tornadus for Federico, and uh, Flutterman and Tornadus once again for Eduardo. Grassy Surge being set up. We have another face-off between these two Tornadus. Is Federico going to be able to get up the Tailwind this game? He didn't need it in the last no, he did not, and I wouldn't be surprised to just see him maybe go for some more Bleak Windstorm here instead, and maybe even just uh, go for an attack into the Flutter Main, since, uh, you know, the of course you could go for a Fake Out into the Tornadus again. It does have the option to go for that Terra Ghost, but honestly I would not expect it to go for that here. So yeah, Fake Out is going to go into that Tornadus, and Iroriko is going to set up Tailwind on his side of the field, and now of course um, you know, he does also run Taunt on his Tornado, so he could also stop this uh, Eduardo's, uh, sorry, Eduardo's uh, Tornado to go for a Tailwind of its own next turn. Fluttermane is going to go for Power Gem into that uh, Tornado slot, but is not going to be able to knock it out. Yeah, it was a really clutch survival from Federico's Tornadus there, very well trained, because Power Gem is not the most common move on Flutter, and picking up a little bit in popularity. Uh, but still, it was something that Federico had calculated for and able to survive. So, Federico currently has a Tailwind, it might benefit Eduardo to stagger these Tailwinds, he would be able to set one up on this turn and uh, have it last for that one extra turn at the end of the game. It will be Taunt coming out from Federico's Tornadus onto Eduardo's, uh, and it's not carrying the Mental Herd, so it would not be able to get up there win this turn. As U-Turn comes out into the Flutterment now for Eduardo, the critical hit not mattering a huge amount there, and Federico is able to reposition. Yeah, the U-turn here into the Fluttermane, maybe if Iriku even expecting this uh, Fluttermane to switch into something like an Ogre Pond or a Chimpal, since uh, I think a Woodhammer would have, might have been able to just knock this Fluttermane out right away, but did not go for that move, so Fluttermane will be able to go for a Power Gem into this Landorus, and you do uh, not quite half, but this Bleak Windstorm is going to bring both Tornadus and Landorus to just a sliver of hell. 
just a sliver of health, but crucially, they're surviving, um, which is huge for Federico. The Tornadus has stuck around on the field for him, and Landorus, yes, has eaten up a lot of damage on the switch in, which is never a position you want your Pokemon to be in. Uh, Power Gem putting in a lot of work for Fluttermane, and it's a pretty safe move to go for in this situation. Able to deal good damage on both Pokemon, and now we see Locky into the Rock Slide for Federico. Are the Pokemon on Eduardo's side going to flinch? We will have to see. Oh, uh, we're going to see Liquid Storm coming out here. for Federico is going to do a little bit of damage to Eduardo's Pokemon. Going to get that speed drop on that Landorus. And Fluttermane does not flinch. Could fire off another Power Gem into the uh, Tornado slot as it goes down. Yeah, Tornado's down and out for Federico now, so normal Tailwind for that side of the field, and Gleekwind is able to pick up the Landorus of Federico as well. So it's uh, another very fast-paced game of knockouts all around so far in this game, with Fluttermane and Tornado's just staying on the field since turn, uh, since turn one for Eduardo here. So they're putting in a lot more work than they did in the previous one, and Federico is now on the back foot uh, at a disadvantage of two Pokémon to Eduardo's four. Yeah. Federico might be the one with Tailwind on his side, but Eduardo quickly knocking out two of uh, his opponent's Pokémon already, and now facing off with Rillaboom and Ogrepon. And Fluttermane is still locked into Power Gym here, so Eduardo might consider a switch here, but no, decides to stay in. It's gonna go down to that Grassy Glide, but you know what, I think Fluttermane did enough already here, so maybe not that big of a deal as Ivy Pebble comes out here on the Tornadus is also going to be enough to knock it out. I'm pretty sure that critical hit uh, wouldn't have made that much of a difference there. Yeah, exactly. So now it is down to two Pokemon apiece for these two trainers. Normal Tailwind able to be set up on either side of the field. And really interesting matchup here is Chi and Power joins the field for Eduardo. Half Flame Ogre Pond joins the field for Eduardo as well. So super effective damage threatened onto the Rillaboom. Uh, but Federico's Ogapon threatens super effective damage onto uh, Eduardo's own Ogapon. But of course, Eduardo's Ogapon could go for a Horn Leech onto the Wellspring Ogapon on Federico's side. So, and of course, all the while, Chi and Pao is dropping the defense of all the Pokemon on the field, and all of these Pokemon are physical attackers. So, really fascinating mind games going on into this turn. And we haven't seen a Terra yet from either trainer either. Yeah, so I, I, a lot that could happen right here, and you know, the, uh, the grassy terrain is still present on the field, which means both Rillaboom and also the Heart Flame Ogre uh, Pond will be able to abuse the grassy quite priority. Um, so I'm not sure if Eduardo might want to stall that out or maybe use it to his own advantage here, but we are going to see a terrestrialization here on what I think is the Rillaboom, yes, which is going to terrestrialize into that fire type once again, so won't be able to uh, be hit super effective by an ice crash from the opposing Chien Pao, as Chien Pao actually decides to just go for a protect as an Ogre Pond, maybe protecting itself, yes, is gonna go for a spiky shield here, so Edo maybe trying to, you know, see if, if uh, Federico goes for that uh, Terra Fire and also stall out this grassy terrain. Yeah, and with the spiky shield up as well, it could threaten a little bit of recoil damage to any moves coming into it, but not this turn. Uh, yes, it's a fairly positional turn from both these trainers. Eduardo still has the terrestrialization available to him. He has to be very careful how he plays this, of course, because he is one game down in this particular matchup. Um, with the Ivy Cudgel there going into a protect, a U turn going into a protect as well, it's, uh, it's a turn where not much has happened, but going into this next one, since Protect has been burnt up, more will happen with an Icicle Crash, the neutral damage oh. to the Wellspring Overcon, and a double up with a Fire-type IV Cudgel as well, and there wasn't even a Follow Me coming out from Wellspring Overcon. It was just good targeting there, and now it's just this Fire-type Rillaboom against Eduardo's two Pokémon, and obviously it takes that Wood Hammer incredibly well. Yeah, so Chi and Pao Ogrepon knocking out that uh, Ogrepon on Federico's side, Huge turn, you know, could have also just gone for a spiky shield itself. But uh, yeah, nice turn by Edu there as Federico is going to accept defeat on the second game. So let's get into let's get game in. three now game and three see now. how Eduardo Cunha and Federico Camparesi adapt to each other's playstyles. Portugal versus Italy is going to be Ogapon being led this time uh, with Tornadus for Federico and Chi and Pao and Tornadus for Eduardo. Yeah, so both Tornadus leads back on the field again, but this time accompanied by Chi and Pao and Ogre Pond respectively. 
Um, so, right off the bat, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the speed on this Ogre Pond is. I don't, I th uh, th we do know that Chimpao is faster than it. We did see that in the last game, I believe. I don't think Tailwind was present on any side of the field then. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that both uh, Tornadus once again do want to set up that Tailwind here. Um, but uh, since there is also no fake out on either side of the field now, they might be able to just go for it freely. As we do see a terrestrialization on the Ogre Pond uh, Wellspring Mask here, which means that it is not it is going to lose that water absorbability, but it will get that special defense boost, which could be useful for any uh, incoming liquid storms. But in a lot of it's going to go for that Tailwind right away here, boosting speed on his side of the field, as Kiribuko also goes for Tailwind on his side. So, first time, I think, uh, in this best of three that both players have had Tailwind on their side. Icicle Crash into that Tornadus with the critical hit is just going to take out you know, at least those Tornadus in one shot, but who knows, maybe, you know, uh, just bringing in another one for free here could be uh, what Kiribuko needs. As oh yeah, wow. and, <laughs> as tornadoes down for Eduardo as well. So both these trainers without their tornadoes. I thought this might happen going into this game. Both trainers thinking, you know what? I'm fed up with being the one without Tailwind in either one of the games. And so they both just go for it. That's the only way to guarantee it. You don't do any mind games with taunting. You just go for the Tailwind. And it's going to be Eduardo's own Ogapon joining the field, but it does have to eat up an immediate intimidate from the Landorus that has come out for Federico. Now, it's really threatened by the Chien Pao on Eduardo's side. It might want to go for a U-turn to deal super effective damage to the Chien Pao whilst getting itself out. Uh, Ogapon for Eduardo, threatened by some heavy water type damage that could come out from Federico's own Ogapon here. But um, so much for what we were saying about the previous two games, Shona. It's an immediate terror this time for Federico. Yeah, and I think I really, really like Federico's position here. The lander is coming in, you know, firing off that Intimidate on both of these physical Pokémon. But also, uh, Ogre Pond could easily go for a Follow Me here, since the only Grass-type Ogre Pond uh, on either side is playing is that Grassy Glide. You turn from Federico's lander is still coming in onto the uh, Chien Pao. Uh, that critical hit, you know, not mattering too much since Chien Pao, of course, does have that Focus Sash that is going to switch out to maybe fire off another Intimidate a little bit later. Eduardo switching in his Fluttermane here now, though, is going to, you know, uh, threaten that Urshifu coming in here, but, you know, of course, the, uh, the Ice Crash gonna do uh, less than half, hangs on pretty nicely. Ivy Kirby here, is it going to go into that Fluttermane slot and maybe pick up another KO? Oh, yes, it is! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fluttermane no longer threatening Urshifu on Federico's side of the field. Wow. Uh, <laughs> talk about a fast game. It's going to be Ogabon Half Flame rejoining the field for Eduardo here. But of course, Federico still has access to the Landorus in the back. So that could come in at any point and provide another Intimidate drop to Ogabon's attack. Of course, the way around that is by terrestrializing your Half Flame Mask Ogabon, which gives it an immediate attack boost thanks to the Embody Aspect ability. Chien Pao, of course, famously a Pokemon that's around for a good time, not a long time. It's dropping the defense of all Pokemon on the field. And as long as long as it's on the field, the Ogre Pond for Eduardo will benefit from that, but then again, so will the Wellspring Ogre Pond and Urshifu for Federico. So, yeah, really explosive game. Yeah, I, I'd be interested to see how much a plus one Grassy Glide, you know, with the Chi and Pao next to you will do to this Ogre Pond. The Intimidate coming in here will lower the Ogre Pond's attack, but uh, if I saw correctly, Eduardo is going to go for a Terrestrialization on his Ogre Pond, which is going to give it an attack boost, bringing it back to neutral attack. But uh, yeah, since you know it is only neutral and not at plus one one, I'm honestly not sure if a Grassy Glide, even with Chi and Pao's support, is going to be able to, in, uh, to knock out this Ogre Pond, as Icicle Crash actually Ooh. misses the opposing Landorus. But here it comes, how much is it going to do? It's not going to be enough that Intimidate coming through huge for Planetary Oh, now the Chi and Power is going to boost the damage of the Ivy Cudgel even further. It's super effective anyway. And Ogapon at Half Flame Mask goes down for Eduardo. So now he's just down to that 1 HP Chi and Power. I feel that if that Icicle Crash had connected, it would have been a one hit knockout onto the Landorus. And as Gavis oh, Knight would say, yeah. <laughs> ding ding ding. Um, but. <laughs> It, it, there's a world, perhaps, in which if that Landorus goes down, Chi and Power is able to bring something back that 
as it is, Eduardo is sort of just dotting the I's and crossing the P's to see this game through, but in the face of Landers on Federico's side, it's not going to be enough, as well as the Urshifu in the back, to clinch the game. And so Federico is going to take this set between Italy and Portugal. Yeah, I think even if that Icicle Crash had connected, you know, Federico still has that Urshifu in the back.